much time, I would uh, uh, request Mr. Rao to start his presentation on uh, aligning with the new normal for the value addition sector. Thank you, uh, Jasudar, and uh, uh, also Firna for the uh, wonderful introduction uh, of today's uh, session. And I also welcome all the participants and the panelists to this uh, session. Um, I, I am going to speak uh, uh, a little bit on uh, how to adopt to the new norm. Uh, you heard the opening, uh, uh, you know, uh, speeches by both. Just Winder and Firna, they talked about this. And uh, I will uh, take the easy path of uh, sharing what uh, we have done uh, to uh, you know, counter the effects of uh, uh, the uh, pandemic. Uh, and uh, I hope that will uh, be more practical uh, than uh, trying to present what uh, overall the industry is doing. So let me uh, move ahead. Uh, very briefly uh, to introduce Griffith Foods uh, to uh, some of you, because some of, most of you are aware of this. Uh, Griffith Foods is um, uh, over a hundred year old company uh, headquartered in uh, Chicago in the US. And uh, it operates uh, today in more than 20 countries. Uh, Griffith Foods makes uh, products, uh, B2B products for the food industry. Uh, some of the key products that we make are sauces, gravies, protein seasonings, snack seasonings, flavors, bases, and uh, uh, other functional blends. Uh, and uh, our products can be found in uh, most of the top brands uh, uh, across the world. Uh, as you may have guessed, you know, spices and herbs uh, is one of the key uh, raw materials that we source. Uh, and the Terowa has the key role to play. Terowa, uh, Terowa is a 100% subsidiary of Griffith Foods, and uh, it has the task of uh, sustainably sourcing spices and herbs, uh, and uh, also to uh, make these uh, products available to uh, other uh, players who are outside the Griffith world. So this is basically uh, a brief about us. And uh, our connection with spices, uh, we are uh, have been sourcing spices and herbs now for almost 80 to 90 years. And uh, some of our key raw materials are black pepper, of course, chili, paprika, sage, and, and white pepper as well. Uh, so oregano, celery, these are all minor ones. But as you can see, black and white pepper are very, very important to us and uh, uh, forms almost 30-35% uh, of our spend on this category. So uh, let me start by uh, you know, stating some of the key concerns or challenges that we are facing as an industry today. Uh, this relates not only to pepper, uh, but to the entire spice industry. So uh, from the point of view of somebody who is sourcing and uh, processing and marketing the products. So first is the regulatory compliance. This is changing day by day and it is getting tightened uh, by most of the uh, importing countries. Recently, uh, you know, we heard that chlorophyllipos has become a big issue in the US. And I'm sure Laura will be covering more on this, but uh, it suffices to note that uh, we are facing, uh, you know, uh, tightened uh, regulations and these regulations are getting more and more stringent day by day. Second is of course the scarcity of resources we, which is um, you know happening almost in all the spices growing areas uh, in the world water labor and shortage of fertilizers even in the advanced developed country like the US we find that uh, the cultivation of uh, red peppers is affected very badly by the shortage of fertilizers. Third one is, uh, you know, the increased cost of freights, logistics and uh, disruption, you know, caused by the pandemic in this area, which is a, a common topic which all of us speak whenever we meet. And this is, uh, although it has eased a little bit now, but 
it is nowhere compared to what it was uh, just two years back. And uh, climate change related issues, uncertainty in outputs, weather changes, and seasonal rains, uh, which is affecting the crop uh, all over the world, caused by climate change. Uh, price volatility, which has always been there, especially in pepper, uh, continues to be with us, pandemic or no pandemic. And this is uh, something which we, as a community, need to address. This, again, is related to overproduction and shortage. As you can see in the photograph, uh, crops, uh, I mean, the pepper plantation get wiped out. They are cut down and replaced by other crops. And this, these kind of, uh, you know, attitude causes uh, wide fluctuation in the supply uh, situation of pepper, uh, leading to price volatility. Sustainability uh, has become a very key area of concern for for all the, uh, you know, uh, it's an industry-wide issue, and a lot of uh, many of our companies, leaders, uh, industry leaders have made commitments to address this issue, uh, whether it is addressing climate change or whether it is um, addressing the biodiversity issues or uh, many of the other common problems we face, hunger uh, and those kind of issues. Um, many of the industry leaders have openly made commitments that their companies would do something uh, concrete to bring down the effects of uh, uh, climate change, uh, uh, effects of various activities causing uh, major climate change. So these uh, all have to be considered by us in the industry as we, uh, you know, go about doing our business of buying, selling, processing, and shipping out the products. Food safety quality, again, uh, a major concern just to give you today uh, as a company or uh, as other organizations that deal in spices and herbs uh, you know every day like i said new things are coming up like currently key issues uh, are things like allergen heavy metals now has become again a major issue of course pesticide residue has always been a major issue uh, there are also uh, things like pH especially coming from pepper which is sourced from brazil uh, and the foreign matter, the microbiology. So these are uh, something which are, uh, you know, uh, so making it more and more difficult for us to uh, source and maintain the supply chain of uh, spices and herbs, including pepper. So uh, this also, uh, you know, makes sure that uh, uh, we have to address this issue in a more holistic way. And uh, it is not uh, good enough to continue the way we were uh, dealing with this, uh, these issues or the way we were sourcing and uh, handling pepper and other spices. So as a company, what we have done uh, is to bring in key uh, interventions. And I will just um, share some of these things. The first and foremost is to develop partnerships in key growing regions. We believe that like some, uh, like, uh, uh, FIRNA set uh, as a single entity, we cannot do much, but as uh, as a group or as, with partners by aligning with others, uh, we will be able to achieve much more. So partnerships in the key, key growing regions is one of the key strategy that we have adopted about four to five years back. Uh, second one is uh, the development of local entrepreneurs. Uh, along with the working, uh, along with the established players. Uh, this has also been something which we have done and which we have helped us uh, during this pandemic uh, months. Setting up direct linkages with the farming community. We believe that, um, uh, you know, I think most of you will agree that uh, the to address the various issues that we just saw, whether it is allergens, heavy metals or pesticide residue, the best way is to work with the farming community rather than trying to clean the product or trying to uh, test the product after it has been sourced. So we, this has also been a key change uh, in the way we have been sourced. And uh, to also look at the, not only look at uh, our own uh, profits or our own 
um, you know, benefits. Also look at how we can give back to the community, improve uh, the livelihood of farmers. Uh, so this also has been a key concern and we are uh, taking some steps to address this. Traceable sourcing, uh, provide complete traceability to end customers all the way back to the farm. Like uh, Firna also talked about digital technology, yes, implementing using the powers of digi digital technology to bring some benefits to both the customers and the farmers. Uh, use of technology to help manage the supply chain better, making supply chain seamless. Uh, and uh, also we are uh, taking steps to address the greenhouse emission issue uh, by taking an inventory of the greenhouse emission that is currently uh, you know, being uh, put into the atmosphere by our current practices and then to set aggressive targets to bring down the emission. Regenerative agriculture uh, and improvement of bio biodiversity is again uh, an intervention we are promoting basically because it goes in uh, not only improving the uh, livelihood of the farm, uh, farming community, but also goes in providing a cleaner environment, reduction in the greenhouse gas uh, and uh, other benefits like preventing the, uh, you know, spoilage of the soil or the land. All these things uh, are going to help the industry in the long run. Again, uh, other key area uh, which we have faced is that we have addressed is, is the problem in uh, delivering goods to the customers on time. So slashing lead times to customers through uh, establishing warehouses at the destination and also improving the supply chain management. Again, uh, the digital technology has, has is playing a key role here so that there is a very good visibility uh, of the status, of the shipments, and other benefits on the, being aware of what is happening and uh, preparing for that. Uh, also, the uh, partnership which I talked about is uh, also being uh, is also being established at the with the customers, and to come up with joint projects uh, with uh, equal commitment from uh, all the stakeholders. Uh, and uh, we also need to pay attention to all the multiple stakeholders who are involved in this, not just the buyers, the sellers. So these have been some of the changes and I will talk about some of the important ones. <clears throat> uh, you know, we have uh, been uh, uh, looking at how we can uh, control the uh, various uh, farming uh, operations that we uh, support uh, in different parts of the world. And we have used uh, technology uh, to this end. Uh, we have all of our uh, activities, uh, such as growing and the uh, next level of process are all uh, digitalized and we are monitoring them uh, regularly. And also using uh, other technology like the GPS technology to make sure uh, that uh, we are keeping track of uh, what is happening in these farms along with our field team. Uh, in Vietnam also we have started this, uh, where Vietnam is our major source of pepper as of now. And uh, although it is not uh, up to the same level as other regions, again, this has been caused by our inability to travel in Vietnam for the last one and a half to two years. However, we are catching up uh, in uh, Vietnam and uh, you know, we have already started bringing all our farms on uh, this platform where we can really uh, see what is going on uh, and uh, help our field team to be more effective uh, and uh, uh, help the farmers in identifying the problems uh, and uh, providing them with timely uh, inputs. So this, are, this has really helped us, especially uh, wherever we had already established this. Uh, even if we could not travel there due to the restrictions uh, imposed by the uh, governments to counter COVID-19, we were able to really uh, effectively monitor the progress of the various programs and uh, uh, provide support uh, to the various farmers. Regenerative agriculture, we are really promoting this very aggressively. Some of those which are really relevant to pepper, 
uh, is to uh, things like increasing the crop diversity, uh, mixed cropping and short duration crops also help farmers to uh, not really depend 100% on pepper, which as you know, has a big uh, gestation period to start yielding. Look at the short term crops uh, so that farmers can start earning income. And also uh, once the crops mature, uh, the uh, dependence on pepper will be reduced. And uh, this will help the farmers to, you know, uh, uh, fight over the lean patches when pepper prices are uh, not very attractive to them. Uh, another key initiative under this uh, program is to reduce the chemical fertilizers being applied. As you know, initially chemical fertilizers provide good returns to the farmer. However, in the long run, they are detrimental to the soil and uh, it is always a good practice to phase them out uh, in a planned manner. And that is also part of uh, regenerative agricultural practices, which we are promoting uh, with the farmers. Also encourage farmers to use biofertilizers and uh, uh, you know solid or green manure, help them to prepare compost and apply them. Another key uh, technology is the precision agriculture, where uh, you know by, by the use of uh, the GPS technology and the uh, satellite technology, we can provide very precise uh, inputs to the farmer so that they do not waste farm inputs, they do not waste uh, unnecessarily apply chemicals and fertilizers uh, without really knowing which part of their farms actually needs to be looked uh, look, to be tended to and which parts are already doing well. So this uh, technology is really helping the farmers to reduce their input costs. Also, uh, you know, uh, other te techniques like, uh, you know, having um, uh, wooded areas, uh, forest land, preserving natural resources around the farm, all these things are being promoted. And wherever it is possible, also use farm animals and uh, which can also go a long way in helping the farmers, not only uh, get the better income, but also to uh, you know, be able to follow some of the techniques like uh, eliminating the use of chemicals. So uh, I just show you some photographs where some of the techniques are being used, like there are farms who are uh, where the farmer is uh, planting other crops along with pepper. We already know about coffee or cardamom, but also other crops like arachnid, pineapples, allspice, cassava. All these are go a long way in helping the farmers to diversify and also um, uh, to be able to be more uh, regenerative uh, in the farming practices. Papaya also we have seen in Brazil, there are many farms where the farmers are also having patches of other crops like fruits, papaya, tea uh, and uh, pepper also a very good combination. So we do not encourage a single uh, crop. However, it will take time uh, for the farmers to make this change, but it is always good to make a start and uh, uh, develop the movement up towards uh, this initiative. Uh, we should encourage farmers um, to have at least two crops uh, at the same time, so that uh, you know uh, this can help in a, a number of ways. Even in the pest management, two crops are found to be uh, much better uh, in addressing pests. Uh, and uh, uh, we have seen wherever uh, this technique has been adopted the use of pesticides has also been reduced. Uh, different plots on the same farm uh, with the different crops is also a very good technique. So these are some of the things, use of farm animals, this also we are encouraging and you can see in many places, these are already being adopted in pepper. And uh, we are encouraging more and more of these things to happen uh, going forward. Other techniques you can see that use of the farm waste or uh, one of the key things we avoid is burning of all the uh, residues that are generated on a farm. And these, can, these are all valuable uh, organic uh, matter which can be uh, put back into the soil. And uh, again, farmers are being trained to gather these and uh, either convert them into compost or put them back as mulching material or as an organic manure uh, back to the soil. 
a uh, lot of um, farmers are now uh, switching they have understood the uh, usefulness of um, organic or bio uh, fertilizers and uh, uh, repellents so we uh, as you can see number of them are available and and we are encouraging uh, farmers to adopt more and more we are actually monitoring the amount of chemical fertilizers being applied and see how this is uh, re being reduced uh, over the years uh, I talked about partnership. Uh, one of the key changes we made in the last two to three years is moving away from multiple suppliers and to develop local partnerships where local um, you know, uh, entrepreneurs are encouraged to set up uh, process units and they also work uh, along with the uh, established players. So, uh, so key features of, uh, of a partner uh, processor, we have developed partner processor in all the major growing areas of spices and herbs. And uh, in Vietnam also we have developed key features is, is that we, de we designed the, the plant uh, to meet the best uh, food safety and quality standards, uh, which is uh, derived from Griffith's um, philosophy of food safety and quality. And uh, we also implement uh, good uh, food safety and quality systems and processes, train the partners to implement them. Uh, we also guarantee that the entire uh, capacity would be uh, utilized uh, over a period of time. And uh, we meet that commitment and also set up laboratories in these facilities so that the wasteful exercise of multiple testing or testing at the destination which can cause major problems uh, if the lot fails at the destination. All these things are avoided and only approved lots uh, are shipped uh, out of the source of the origins. Also to develop programs of sustainable sourcing raw materials, having a local partner uh, helps a lot. Uh, and uh, also uh, it um, helps to make long-term commitment uh, to not only guarantee sourcing, but also to say that we are there all the time providing technical inputs uh, to our partners, which are then transmitted to the farming community. Transparency in pricing uh, also uh, is a benefit that comes out of this, uh, having a local, a local partnerships. And partnerships are not only for processing, but also for growing and uh, developing a network of farmers. So we want to encourage uh, uh, the development of local businessmen uh, and uh, uh, which uh, will help in maintaining very good food safety and quality control and also will help us in establishing traceability in the supply chain. And uh, you can see an example of how we have set up a unit which meets the best uh, food safety quality standard in the world. Again, we talked about uh, technology, precision agriculture. Here, uh, I'll just show you an example of how we can guide farmers. You can see this, a farm uh, is not uniform. Uh, it is not homogeneous, but different uh, parts of the farm. Are, the red one here shows that uh, this requires high level of attention that the crop has been doing very badly. So this again, using the satellite uh, technology where we can guide farmers uh, at which parts of their farms really need attention. You can see here most of the farm is doing okay, but certain parts require this immediate attention. So we divert our field officers to have a look at that uh, and then provide uh, uh, timely and uh, the right kind of uh, intervention. This also helps you to uh, you know, look at the weather pattern, how the weather has been behaving over the last few years and uh, provide inputs to the farmer on when they should actually uh, plant and how the uh, you know weather is likely to behave uh, in the coming coming month. Also monitor the temperature and also give forecast for the next uh, you know uh, three to four weeks, which will help farmers to plan their agricultural activities. I also talked about community development, which is again a very key uh, you know uh, part of our intervention. Uh, which has helped us to establish loyalty with the farming community to be able to source under difficult times even during the pandemic uh, we have seen that um, once we train the farmers of, of, of safe practices how to 
protect themselves by wearing masks and by sanitizing their hands to maintain distances. We were able to really ensure that farmers were kind of going about their business of cultivating, harvesting, and selling the produce. At the same time, a lot of uh, help given to farmers um, on uh, on how to safely work there and provide them with other inputs uh, which uh, were needed at that time. Uh, farm to customer traceability, I already talked about. You can see that the typical supply chain uh, uh, would be of, of 27 months duration because uh, uh, the farming activity starts just after one harvest. In the case of pepper, uh, in the month of March or April, when the farmers start applying fertilizers for the next season, and if anything goes wrong here, you will see the impact of that after 27 months when the crop has been processed and it has been delivered to the customer. So that is why we, we say that it is very, very important to have traceable, traceability in the sourcing. And uh, we have taken a lot of steps to do that. Uh, advantages of that is to help build trust of brands uh, at the product, helps in building sustainable supply chain assures buyer about the authenticity of the products, better prepared for climate uncertainty, easy to implement food safety practices, and helps consumer develop a holistic outlook rather than a price-centric uh, outlook. So you can see that every product that we ship, uh, currently uh, this is not yet implemented in pepper, but we have implemented in many of the other spices. Uh, we can trace back just with the help of a QR code all the way back to the farm. Very briefly, I'll give you a quick demo on this uh, so that uh, we can move on to the next slides. So if you scan that, uh, you know, the QR code, which is there on all the products that is shipped out from uh, the origin, you will get an idea of uh, you know, who are the farmers, or which, is the, which are the farms, which is the growing area. And uh, by clicking on that farm, you will get uh, all the details about the farmer as well as the farm uh, as to what uh, where the farm is located you can zoom in and see where in the world the farm is from where the uh, product is uh, being delivered to the customer and you can also see uh, other important aspects of what pesticides get sprayed and many other details uh, as per the requirement of the customers uh, can be presented to them by using a combination of digital technology and uh, having a field team uh, which, who is trained in capturing this uh, information. We can also see things like, uh, uh, you know, what were the border crops, what are the neighboring farms, whatever you want can be you know, presented here, uh, provided you have captured that information. Whether it is quality parameters, what kind of quality uh, checking has been done, what testing was done, pesticides sprayed and so on and so forth. So this just to give you, I will skip the rest of this and move on. Uh, the last uh, part of the changes we made uh, is this uh, improvement in the supply chain management or what we call as uh, supply chain innovation. So here uh, uh, we started uh, uh, developing warehouses uh, at the uh, destination and started uh, implementing um, uh, supply chain management to hold stocks and maintain stocks very close to the end customer. Uh, this helped a lot, especially uh, when there was disruption in the shipments, when there was delay in the lead time. And local warehousing uh, uh, at the destination markets helped a lot in ensuring that uh, products were supplied on time uh, to the customers. And also a direct linkage of the customer supply chain with the, uh, our partner, uh, who was processing the products that the status of all the shipments were seamlessly uh, available to all the uh, customers. Digital tracking of the status uh, and uh, providing, um, uh, you know, uh, almost uh, uh, seamless information to the customers. And uh, during the last two years, uh, in spite of uh, disruption, uh, to uh, ocean freight movement. We did not have a single day of stock out in these categories, that is the spices and herbs, uh, because of these uh, steps. Uh, you can see that, um, you know, we have uh, different uh, factories 
located which are shown here in the yellow blocks and we have partner processors who are shown in the red here uh, and we were able to combine the uh, you know the benefits of having partner processors and uh, having the end warehouses uh, by ensuring that there is a seamless supply chain established between the two which is linked to the customers who could then draw material from their closest warehouse which helped a lot uh, when the uh, during the difficult times so uh, these are uh, i just wanted to share this and i hope um, this experience that we had uh, which i'm sharing now will be of help ultimately uh, my personal uh, uh, opinion is that uh, pandemic or no pandemic covid or no covid these changes were anyway going to happen uh, because they were absolutely necessary uh, for the long uh, long term survival of the global spices business however what pandemic did was it accelerated these changes so people saw the urgency and uh, the various players uh, in the spices industry began, began to react much more quickly uh, because of the uh, pandemic i'm sure most of you uh, will will relate to this because all these changes are uh, being brought in by several players in the industry and i hope that uh, this presentation will be of use to uh, all of us to uh, make changes which are relevant to the current uh, situation so that's it uh, and uh, so just should that we take questions now or we uh, wait in there so just to remind uh, our audience uh, there will be a panel discussion at the end of all the presentations and they are requested to uh, post their uh, questions uh, there is a whatsapp number available on the screen or if they have logged in into zoom there is a chat room they can also enter the questions over there and at the end of all presentations we are going to have all the panelists and uh, a small discussion will be done on, on all the questions uh, thank you so much mr rao it was a, a fantastic presentation uh, on aligning the, aligning the value chain uh, as per the new normal in fact as you suggested the pandemic has accelerated uh, the alignment uh, uh, for most of the uh, sector and uh, sooner the better uh,